Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today I'm coming at you guys with another Talk of the Hawk video here on the Hawking Regime channel. Today, taking a look at the Seattle Seahawks 2013 victory over the Minnesota Vikings at home in week two of the 2017-2018 preseason. Normally, the way I like to do these post-game analysis videos is just kind of go over the positives of the game from the perspective of the Seattle Seahawks, the negatives of the game, the MVP of the game, as well as some takeaways heading on into week number three for Seattle. Now, going on into the positives of the game, before I even started off uh, this post-game analysis video, I did a pre-game analysis of this game, and I thought I was, I was looking to pay attention to the offensive line. And in the beginning, I felt like it actually was a positive. You had... <clears throat> Excuse me. You had the typical starting five lineup of George Fant, uh, or from left to right, Fant, uh, Jokel, Britt, um, Glowinski, and Afedi. And those guys were pretty solid early on, even against a stout Minnesota defense. Uh, Lacey got a little bit of rumbling going, nothing too crazy uh, in terms of the carries. You see only six carries or 20 yards, nothing insane at all. I had a good run early on, which was like, yeah, a long of nine. Um, and in terms of getting the ball out of his hands, Russell Wilson did an unbelievable job, and uh, that'll get in, I'll get into him a little bit later. But in terms of the pauses from the offensive line play, early on it was really solid, and you know I felt like they just did a great job in protecting Russell Wilson and not allowing him to get hit because of the fact that. Uh, you know, he was getting hit a lot last year and the sacks were mounting up and he was only sacked one time for uh, that 13 yard loss against, I think it was Danelle Hunter had a good play on Russell, but for the most part, pretty good job. I felt, uh, again, 13 from 18. So he did a solid job there in terms of running the football. I wouldn't, I, I don't know if that's a positive. It was not bad. Again, 153 yards in the ground. A lot of guys were running the ball. You had Lacey Carson, Davis, Alex Collins, uh, Trevon Boykin got a little bit in there. Um, I thought, uh, Kaysen Williams was a huge positive in the passing attack. Only two receptions for 28 yards, but had two miraculous plays, and I didn't see him. I don't even know if he played a bunch of other snaps uh, aside from that. Baldwin was really nice early on. Uh, you kind of expect that. Every time you watch Baldwin, if you're a Seahawks fan, you just kind of, it, it's crazy. You just kind of think to yourself, like, wow, how was this guy at one point undrafted? You know, he he's literally looking like one of the best receivers in the league just in preseason by the way he plays. The routes he runs, uh, uh, just so quick unbelievable hands it's really a treat to watch Doug Baldwin play a wide receiver in the NFL for the Seattle Seahawks I mean Russell didn't even have a great throw to him on one of his early plays and he still just made you know made it happen so uh, that was really exciting to watch um, early on a lot of big catches made by some receivers defensively I would say the positives were that you know got a couple turnovers you got um, uh, they got uh, 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 oh, actually three of, our, three of the players for Seattle ended up fumbling, but you had an interception by Tedrick Thompson, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the sack numbers, again, that was a problem that I kind of had coming in. They're just not getting a bunch of pressure on opposing quarterbacks, but you know it is what it is. You had one interception, and I, and I believe there's a couple fumble recoveries as well. Uh, yeah, they lost one or one, I guess only two turnovers, but still solid. I mean, in comparison with what Seattle was getting a lot of last year in the regular season, that's just uh, a good number right there for uh, two a game. Um, but in general, I thought the pauses were, again, the good first drive. Uh, run blocking wasn't crazy, but I thought pass protection was solid for Russell Wilson. Uh, and and this, the starting defense held up as, a, as opposed to last week which they let up a touchdown the first drive. Again, it was against Phillip Rivers, which is tough, and it was the first game, but uh, that was a little bit unfortunate to see. And I thought that, again, getting the ball out of Russell Wilson's hand as fast as he can, as fast as you know they, they could have him do was, like, I really thought it was a great move because of the fact that, you know, he's getting hit so much, and they're high percentage throws, and they're getting lots of yards out of it. It just makes the game so much more difficult for the defense. You see Tom Brady do it all the time. Just quick throws. You know, it, it, great, it creates a rhythm offensively, and it's really tough to stop and really tough to get pressure after the quarterback if you start, you know, drives off with things like that. So uh, I was impressed with that. That kind of concludes my positives. The negative is the big one. Sorry, oh, also one more positive is that Blair Walsh had an excellent game. I think he was like three of four kicking. Um, let's see if they have the numbers. Oh, two of three uh, with two, I think, 50 yarders, which is really nice. I I'm really kind of impressed with him because I remember, you know, how solid Hauschka has been for Seattle the past couple of years during their run of success. And to have Walsh come in, hopefully he can do the same. And he kind of proved that he still has that leg um, for Seattle this season. So going on into the negatives, the big one is the fact that George Fant left the game with an injured knee, and that is extremely scary because he was starting to play pretty well, and they had to bring in Odiambo, and I'm a, I feel like a fan is just gone for the year. I haven't seen a guy with a knee injury like that. Uh, just carted off the field that comes back, but I'm hoping it's just not 
as excessive as, as big of a deal as I think it is. I mean, it's not like Fan is this unbelievable starting left tackle for Seattle. They haven't had a bunch of you know success with the offensive linemen in general, but you want to create that chemistry, and he was starting to do that with Jokel, and it's just really unfortunate to see, man. I'm, I'm really uh, frustrated over that. Um, in terms of running the game, or in terms of the running game, Alex Collins was a little bit disappointing early on. He started to pick things up late. Uh, I, I can't tell for sure who's going to be the odd man out in the running attack. Um, but other than that big injury by George Fant, I don't really know if there was a lot of negatives I would have with this game for Seattle just in general. I mean, there's obviously some guys, some young guys out there who just who couldn't make some plays. Uh, one player I do want to mention is Shaquille Griffin, and he was, you know, if you watch the game, he was thrown at quite frequently, and really a lot of balls were caught on him a lot during the game. You know, he had to make a lot of uh, plays on the ball because, you know, they were just running kind of like, he was not giving up the big play, really. They were just kind of taking the underneath against him a lot, and it, that's tough to handle against as a cornerback, you know, psychologically. But in reality, he's doing a great job with that. You know, he's not allowing the big play downfield. They're going to take that all day, um, and eventually he'll learn how to capitalize on those type of throws. So I felt pretty good about uh, Shaquille Griffin, to be honest with you. Nothing crazy. Uh, I think he's just going to get better as time goes on. Tremaine, Bo- Tr- Tremaine Brock played a, played a little bit, but he still has to learn the defense, so he didn't get a ton of time. Got a lot of uh, got some snaps at the nickel spot, but nothing crazy there. So I'll get into the MVP of the game. I thought Russell Wilson, honestly, was the MVP. 13 of 18, 206 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Blair Walsh had a, was kind of cool to watch too, uh, to be honest with you. Casey Williams early on was really exciting. So, you know, there's a couple other candidates you got there. But Wilson, it's just, it's fun to watch his progression, I think, as a quarterback year in, uh, year out. If he can just, if the line can help him out a little bit, uh, it would just do wonders because we've already seen what he can do under pressure. And when he gets some time, it, it's really just fun to watch him play. He's so smart and it's funny. I, I almost laugh when he, he just slid down after a two-yard game because he's just so knowledgeable about the game in, in the way that he doesn't want to get hurt at all. He just knows he's too valuable, doesn't want to risk it. Even if it's just a low chance, like he doesn't take that in the preseason. Uh, you just have to respect what he's done uh, for his game and for the franchise, you know, in the Seattle Seahawks. So I was really impressed with him uh, today in getting 206 yards and two touchdowns. Now takeaways from this game, Seattle heading on to week three of the preseason. I actually don't even know who they, I think they end up playing Kansas City because the schedule's relatively similar to what they had in previous years. So I think they do play uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, whether or not it's in Seattle, I, I, don't, I really don't know. Um, but that's just going to be another game for some players to prove themselves. I'm curious to see if they play Wilson as much as they did today. I highly doubt it. Uh, in terms of the running game, that's another aspect that really intrigues me. Um, I don't know who the odd man out is going to be. I feel like Collins would be, but he had a good game today. Got the most carries as well. And then also the offensive line. Defensively, I'm actually really kind of you know content with what Seattle's working with. A lot of the guys seem like they have a ton of energy. Uh, the draft picks of Delano Hill, uh, Tedrick Thompson, you know, Shaquille Griffin, a lot of these young guys playing pretty well. Nazair Jones played well, I, you know, so they had, I'm really excited about the defense, to be honest with you. The offense is just the only concerning part in terms of depth, especially the offensive line. You just want to see them get more consistent, and that's just what I'm going to continue to look at uh, in the future preseason games. That will be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. You know, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Talk with the Hawk videos. I always do both pregame and postgame analysis videos of every Seattle Seahawks. Again, preseason, regular season, and postseason games. So stay tuned for week number three of the Seattle Seahawks preseason schedule. Once again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And yep, thanks for watching.